episode 48 of the Callan Yarns podcast. My name is Lynn and I'm coming to you as always from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting, spinning, sometimes crochet, sometimes dyeing but always fibre based fortnightly podcast. It is the, check my phone for the date, Saturday the 6th of March. Uh, it is a beautiful day here in Cardiff. There's not many clouds in the sky. Uh, it feels quite warm. So yes, a walk out and about this afternoon will probably be called for, although we've got quite a bit to do today. Hey ho. Um, yes, if you are a new viewer, thank you so, so much for joining us. I'm glad you found us. And if you are a returning or a regular viewer, as always, thank you so much for being here once more to, uh, to yes, follow me on my fibre adventures. It's a really, really lovely way to kind of check in with you. And I always uh, really appreciate the messages that you send me each week. So yes, drop me a line. Tell me what you're up to. You can either leave me a message down below or you can catch me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active, probably. So Cal on Yarns on Instagram, on Ravelry, on Facebook, on all the, the social media places. So yes, do drop me a line. Um, what do I have for you today? It's really busy on my street today. I don't know if you can hear all the cars. I don't know why. It never is normally that busy. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Yes, what do I have for you today? So I have a finished object. La, 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 la. Uh, two finished objects, actually. Yes. Um, what else? I have uh, works in progress that I showed you last time. I also have a, a new cast on and quite a bit of spinning to show you. Do I have any acquisitions? Not really some acquisitions, but um, yes, I have had a lovely gift, which I will show you and tell you all about afterwards. So yeah, we'll run through all that and then the usual kind of chit chat at the end. So let's get started. So the finished object for this week is the strange brew sweater for my husband. He had to dash out this morning, so I wasn't able to um, get a photograph of him wearing it, but I'll pop one up on Instagram or something at some point later. I'm sure you're all dying to see him in it. Uh, but yes, this is a Tin Can Knits uh, sweater, strange brew sweater. So the book that I've kept banging on about, and I'll put the details below, is um, a book by T Tin Can Knits that you, there are, patterns in it anyway but there's also a recipe so that you can build your own pattern for whatever you want to do and that's sort of what I did I chose a little bit of the pattern that was in there the ice fall pattern and also then made up my own pattern with the recipes kind of followed the, the numbers and the row counts etc so I am absolutely thrilled with it as is Kieran it fits beautifully it is in blue face Leicester and this, uh, the cream here is undyed yarn. As I've said time and time again, if you've been here for a while, that's undyed yarn. And then this blue color I dyed myself. So it is very, very soft. And I think even with the blocking yesterday, uh, it's starting to pill already. So yes, it is one of those fibers that is beautifully soft, but is gonna kind of take a few, um, a few times of taking those pills off, but it's really, really cozy, fits wonderfully. I love these kind of darker flashes of blue that I sprinkled on as I knit through. I did the helical method because obviously the, the skeins weren't exact in matching tone and color. So I worked with two balls of yarn so that there wasn't a solid line where the color varied slightly. And I think that's worked really well. Um, yeah, what more to say about it really? It was on four millimeter needles. It did take me some brain work. If you've been here for a while, uh, we had a big discussion over altering the color work pattern here because it has to incorporate some increases. So yes, did some maths in this bit and then we were okay. We were plain sailing. But when I was um, looking at which size I wanted to make, etc. Okay. Just be still. Um, I did a swatch of a hat. So that's the other thing that the Tin Can knit, knit book suggests is that really, if you're knitting in the round, you should swatch in the round um, because your your gauge can change really if you're doing um, a little gauge square, which is back and forth. But the project you're wanting to knit is in the round. So they suggest either starting with a sleeve, which seems like quite a sensible option, especially if you're doing a top-up sweater because the sleeves are done separately generally anyway. 
that one was a, a top down bottom up is what I meant to say let's not overcomplicate things already on this Saturday morning so you can either do a sleeve or you can do a hat or a cowl maybe so that's what I did um, I my swatch was the beginnings of a hat so once I knew I had the gauge and the gauge was fine um, I kind of left off that because I wasn't entirely sure that I would have enough yarn for the jumper as it is I got loads left so I'm very happy with that so there's a whole ball and a half um, two balls here that I didn't even cut off they're still kind of attached to the project but I didn't go any further thinking that I may need to um, use them at a later date but I didn't and I think I've also got um, at least uh, a ball of the cream and a ball and a half maybe of the blue still so that is it hat he's got gonna have gloves it'll be chunky socks I mean yeah talk about the boy in blue so now I can continue this hat just in time for the spring and summer um, so he can be all matchy matchy so that's exciting isn't it so yes I'm very very pleased I'm, I'm really good idea of, of swatching in the round because swatching in the round when you you know just for the sake of it is quite soul destroying isn't it but swatching in the round when you're actually making something is quite a good idea I'm just looking down here because I think one of the backs of my pins has fallen off oh no I don't know look at that later anyway so yes that I will now carry on with now I know that I've got everything I need for the jumper so that's my one finished object my second finished object um is a cowl so last week I showed you my first ever hand spun which was incredibly uneven thick and thin etc um, but I thought well, I, I want to do something with it so I had toyed with the idea of making some socks some nice chunky socks but I thought it's so uneven that might be uncomfortable at the bottom of your foot etc certainly not to be able to wear in shoes or boots or whatever so I thought no I'll make a cowl so that is what I did and I am really pleased with it. So this is a cowl for Kieran, my husband. Um, so yeah, he's he's properly decked out for, for the winter, which is hopefully quite a while away. But yeah, and I thought it was so uneven, this spin. And I and the reason I wanted to use it was to kind of go, well, actually, can you make pretty much anything out of your spinning? And if you're a new spinner, sometimes I think we get a bit disheartened and think, oh, it doesn't look even. I'm not going to be able to use it as anything. I'll just put it in the compost and forget about it. But actually, you know, it's sort of, yes, there are thicker bits and thinner bits, you know, here. But once it was blocked, um, they sort of calm down and it's so cosy. So it looks like it it was meant to be that like the yarn is actually supposed to be like that so I think it's just nice to be able to use everything you make no matter how much you think it's ugly or not right or not perfect it still makes a lovely thing to keep someone you love warm so that's a good thing <laughs> when I said when Kieran said um I don't know if your your loved ones say this but I was knitting away and he said um what are you knitting now like, like there's ever going to be an, an end to what I'm knitting now. Like, once that one thing is done, then the knitting is done. So that was really weird to begin with. Like, well, I'm knitting something else. So I said, oh, actually, I'm knitting you a cowl. And he said, oh, I never thought I'd own a cowl. And I thought that was the, the most brilliant way of not going, what do I want a cowl for? or I don't want a cowl, I don't like cowls, or or what's a cowl, or it was the pause before the very generous, I didn't think I'd ever own a cowl, which kind of turned it into something that was so unattainable for him maybe that, that you know, he kind of had kept himself awake in the evenings thinking, I don't think I'll ever own a cowl. And yet here it was, his lovely wife <laughs> making him a cowl. So yeah, that just made me laugh and laugh. Yeah, he never thought he'd own a cowl. So with no hint of negativity, just wonderment. 
So yes, that is his wondrous cowl ready for winter to go with his jumper and his matching hat. If he ever wears it all together, I will be sure to post a photograph. Um, yeah, so that's my other finished object. And I've clearly been on a bit of a cowl kick at the moment because I have another cowl on the needles. Um, and I'm rubbish. In Wales, our national dish is the cowl, which is like a, a stew, a lamb kind of stew. I'm vegetarian. I don't eat the lamb bit, but I always make veggie ones. Anyway, I can never quite remember which way round they're spelt, whether the cowl is a, is with an A for the soup and an O for the neck. Or I'm, Anyway, at least it sounds the same, so I don't have to show my uh, my ignorance on A's and O's. Anyway, so this is the Arboretum cowl by Campfire Knitting and this is done from my hand spun I'm not sure if you can see that because I can't see you um, but oh wow am I loving this pattern I'm loving the fiber it's just all going on it is so soft so this is John Arban textiles body bar and the, those flashes of copper that you can see there are pretty much pretty true um, and this is another early days spinning uh, this is from the fiber hut and this is alpaca silk and merino I think and this one I managed to spin it so thinly so I'm holding two strands together I'm not sure if it's going to focus um, this is two strands together and they're both two ply so I don't know, I thought I was, I don't know, Sleeping Beauty or something. Um, like, I had spun it so thinly um, that I've had to double it up in terms of holding two strands together to match this one. But yes, very pleased with that. So I think I've got about half the chart to go. These, it finishes off with these kind of branches at the bottom and then goes past this which I kind of think is the flames that's how it reads to me then back to the um, the branches at the top and Bob's your uncle all finished so that I can't wait for next winter to wear but yeah the texture is very very cozy so I hope we get a cold winter so you know we can be all uh, snuggled up etc so yeah that's on a mm, 3.75 I think it is um, and it's a free pattern it's a free pattern on Ravelry so have a little look I think she's now um, a yarn dyer as well I just had a quick flick through her profile on Instagram but she's got a few pa um, patterns on Ravelry so worth a look if you can head over to Ravelry um, so yes those are the works in progress I think not a great deal I got quite a few bits off the needles these last couple of weeks um, and it was quite nice to do something that wasn't sweaters, wasn't big projects. It's been a real needle cleanser, palette cleanser, whatever you want to call it, to do something that's quite small, quite short in terms of time commitment um, and has used up stuff. Yeah, they both used up hand spun. So, yeah, it's been nice to do smaller projects. But then, of course, you get the itch for a sweater. So that's my new cast on. This is my Zweig and um, I'm not, yeah, I, I know I'm coming back to this, but it's, it is linked, I promise. So this is my Zweig. Now, apparently, um, Zweig means branch in German. And clearly, thanks to my lovely friend Julia from the Happy Knitting podcast, I'm becoming pretty, pretty fluent because I forgot to tell you, of course, about my party socks. They are coming on nicely. Don't really need to say much more about those other than party is die lot in German so I thought that was the colour party because it looks like a party yes but no apparently party p-a-r-t-i-e yes uh, means die lot so there we go that's one German word an essential German word um, and now I know that Zweig means branch so a few podcasts ago, uh, yeah, I was talking about dyeing up stuff to make another Zweig because I really, really like this pattern. It's one of the first uh, jumpers I made, really. It is incredibly bobbly now. I need to get the uh, the bobble machine thing to it. Um, but I have worn it and worn it and worn it. As you can see, I dyed this 
dark colour and this was a, I think it's a cat and sparrow design, um, yarn. Um, and what I really love about it is the fact that it really features a skein. You know, a lot of colour work sweaters, colour work yokes, etc. Um, you see flashes of the, of the skein, but this one, the skein becomes a real feature, the contrast skein or the, the featured skein becomes really prominent in the sweater. So I, that's what I really like about it. Um, so I was always wanting to do another one. So this is what I'm doing. So I can see the battery flashing at me then. So I changed it. Um, yes, yeah, so I dyed up some yarn to do another Zweig earlier in the year. And I, I think there's uh, the podcast. I'll put the podcast number here if you're at all interested. Because I bought this skein of yarn from uh, Fru Valbull at EYF. Um, I mean, let's just take a moment to appreciate the joy and wonder of that skein of yarn. It is just the most beautiful thing, as are all her colours. Uh, yeah, I think she's an incredibly talented dyer and such a lovely person. If you haven't checked out her podcast, I think it's called The Dye Pot. Um, yeah, go and check that out, but very fun, very lovely. So this is called Borderline by Fruvalbor. That's her uh, logo. And this is her logo, I think, when she vends out of Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam. Her personal logo for the company is slightly different to this, but the name obviously is the same. So I wanted something, the feature, this to be the feature of the Zweig. And then I worked up, dyed up some really juicy green, spring green. It's a little bit darker than that, maybe. Uh, Yes, to kind of balance that out. So it's going to be really bright, really cheerful. Don't really know what's going on with me. I'm generally greys, blues, but just loved that juiciness of the green um, that I thought then would allow that skein to really pop. So yes, I cast it on yesterday. Um, and that's as far as I've got because I cast on 144 stitches, as it said, and then I did my e increases, uh, did a couple of rows, did another couple of increases, and then thought, oh. and it tells you the stitch count as you go along, so I thought I'll just have a quick check that I'm on the right stitch count. Way off. Did some maths, thought, no, that should have increased, I couldn't work it out where I'd gone wrong. It wasn't 144 stitches to cast on, it was 112. Where had I got 144 from? I, that just, do you do that where you kind of read something and then you turn away and something else goes into your head completely? So yeah, so that was a drama. So then I thought, oh, I wasn't quite sure of the fabric. So I then did a gauge swatch. So yeah, after I'd cast on and knit about two inches, I then went back and thought, oh, no, this is just a mess. I need to start again, do a proper gauge swatch. So I did that. Um, needle size, gauge swatch, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about the fabric. I think the difference is this is merino singles and this is high twist merino. And I think in terms, I've used the same uh, needle size on both sweaters, but I think the difference is the singles, they're sort of a bit more generous, they sort of puff out a little bit more, they kind of, you know, hang with their, their stitch buddies. So they kind of fill the gaps a little bit more, whereas the high twist merino is kind of very, it's still very soft, beautifully soft, but it's a bit more structured maybe. And so it kind of sticks to its own lane, sticks to its own stitch. So the fabric seems to be a little bit more open than this is, was, um, but we'll see. Not ripping it back again, even though that would like take me about three minutes, but yeah. So we're off, we're off once more. Um, excuse me, uh, with the Zweig by Caitlin Hunter. So I'll put the link to the patterns, etc. below. But yes, I've been planning this one for quite some time. Oh, actually, and this is a bit of news. So I got me a new Hyden Hammer bag because I love Hyden Hammer bags. As you can see, they are my favorite bags. They fit a sweater beautifully. They travel really well. Yeah, they stand up really stiff and straight. I, I really like them. Um, 
but I saw that she was selling some off for pretty much half price because these were just fabrics that she was uh, practicing with or playing with, experimenting with, um, and I managed to bag one quickly. She only had a few, so I'm very, very pleased with that. Um, yeah, so pleased to be to have started that Zweig, um, because I do wear this a lot, as you can see. Um, projects, I think that's it for On the Needles, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, only my party socks in terms of sock knitting. I think I'm going to have a look through my... Um, 52 weeks of socks and maybe choose another pattern from there uh, because otherwise I've only done one from there that's bad that's bad so I need to find another one to do and I've whilst I was finding that um, that load of yarn for the Zweig I found some other bits of yarn so but we won't talk about that um yes so spinning what have I been up to in terms of spinning I have been ticking away on my John Arban textiles Yana Delic in Black Gold of the Sun, which is a sweater spin. Um, I've got two bobbins like this. I've already done two skeins. Uh, I'm not sure how even it is in terms of the, the, the bobbins matching, the skeins matching when I apply them together, but that's okay. We'll see where we get to. Although I did have a fantastic tip from Tracy, uh, hi Tracy if you're watching, who said that um, it's always a good idea to hang on and keep Keep your spin on the bobbins if you're two plying until you've done the whole sweater quantity. Not enough bobbins, but get in there. And then you can kind of match the bobbins up. So if one's a little bit thicker and one's a little bit thinner, then you can partner them up to make the two ply so that hopefully your two plies are more evenly balanced, which I thought was a great idea. Um, I just need to get some more bobbins. Uh, yes, so that is ticking away nicely. I am also with a couple of my spinning friends, Carol and uh, um, Becky from Back to Blighty podcast. Uh, we're hoping to spin and knit the Sneffeld, Sneffeld shawl, which I think means snowfall in Danish or Swedish. Uh, look, I'm like multilingual, I mean, seriously, um, by Fibre Tales. So we're all kind of choosing different fibres, etc. So. I'm lagging behind Becky, who is a super speedy spinner. Um, so I've had done a little bit of an experiment with my Jacob fleece, uh, my Jacob fibre. So this is from the Fibre Hut. Um, and I've been trying to, I've got some white Jacobs, I think I showed you last time, some black and then some grey uh, Norwegian fibre. So I want to do it in natural shades. Um, but I was aware that I was worried that if I spun it too with too much twist, it would become itchy. And obviously it's going to be around my neck. So I wanted to use as, as little twist as possible, yet obviously still hold together. So this is two ply and I have, um, what's the word, uh, soaked it and it's puffed up beautifully. It is so light, it is unbelievable. So I'm not sure now whether it's too thick, but when you squash it, I can't show you that but when you squash it it's uh it's really quite thin it's just really puffy so I think I'm gonna have to knit a little swatch with that and see if um if it knits to the DK weight that I am looking for so yeah I'm very pleased it doesn't feel particularly itchy I did a little test shoved it in my bra which apparently is what you're supposed to do to see if it aggravated completely forgot about it then just kind of fell out of my bra at the end of the day so it was it was soft enough for that but I'm going to knit up a little section and see see what happens there um yeah so in terms of what I've been spinning that's that however I was sent some fiber which I will tell you about now if you have been with me for a while, you will know that I learned to spin at the Fibre Hut in Evesham with the lovely Gay and her husband David. Uh, I went up there for the day with my friend Carol and it was wonderful. We spent the morning spinning and then in the afternoon we did some weaving and I bought my wheel from her. They put it together, got it all sorted, etc. And so when I learned to spin, I learned to spin on my wheel, which was her advice and was absolutely brilliant advice. Um, 
so since then I have bought loads of fibre from her and it is always beautifully prepared and in her shop you must go if you can once everything's back open go and have a look um, there's like a corridor of uh, merino colours all the different colours in little boxes uh, merino tops so you can kind of take as much as you need it's like a sweet shop for spinners and then you know another corridor or wall of Corriedale and uh, what else? I can't even think of anything else. Um, Jacob and Shetland and Gotland and all these beautiful, beautiful fibres that are so beautifully prepared. Um, and they also combine their own colours and create bats and plaits, etc. So yes, it's a fibre heaven. Um, and I also recently bought my blending board from her, which again has been a great opportunity to kind of put colours and um, fibres together, experiment a little bit more and make some Rolex. Anyway, long story short, so she got in touch with me a couple of uh, weeks ago and said that they were adding some new colours to their fusion range. So their fusion range is their range of fibres that they uh, blend together themselves to create different, um, yeah, different, uh, what's the word, combinations, different colours, etc. So yeah, so they had a new uh, range and some new colours. Could she send me a couple of um, bits of fibre for me to have a look at and tell you about on the podcast? So there's my disclaimer. I have been sent two uh, tops, I guess you'd call them, from two of those different ranges to share with you. So yes, I have been gifted those. Um, but oh, what a joy. So yes, when she asked me if she could send them to me, didn't take me long to say yes yes please that would be lovely and she said oh go and have a look on the website see what color you'd like well that was the drama is uh, trying to explore all the beautiful colors and choose something that um my favorite and that was impossible anyway so the two ranges that she has and I've got my notes of contents here so the Whisper range is a range that they had already, but they have created some new colours for it. So this is the Fibre Hut um, logo. Can you see that? And this is the Whisper range. So this is a Fibre Hut Fusion range in the Whisper, and this is the shade Dew. <gasps> Look at that. That's a pretty accurate uh, representation, actually, of the colours those wonderful greens. So I thought, you know what, I've had so many greys, etc., and naturals. I just wanted something with a bit of a bit of juice, a bit of uh, colour in it, and that did not disappoint. It is so soft. So this range, the Whisper range, is five colours of merino in each kind of colourway. Uh, baby alpaca and tussa silk. So this is the dew colour. So she sent me this and then the other colours in the range. So what else have we got? So this is called um, Mist. Look at those delicate, delicate greys in there. I was very tempted by that one. And that one you can really see the silk in it. See the little lilacs in there? So that's Mist. This one is uh, Morning Sun. Look at that joyous yellow there and little kind of darker greys in there. That one's bleeding out a little bit. Yeah, dark greys and these really soft yellows. And yellow can often be a bit harsh, can't it? But that, um, yeah, it's a real gentle yellow. And then this one is Daybreak. So very pinky uh, with a lighter and darker pinks in there. So yeah, very, uh, that sort of misty morning daybreak. Almost lilac-y actually, very um, rose-coloured rather than pinky maybe. So yeah, those were the, the four colours, the four new colours in the Whisper range. And then this is the Moorland range. So this is an entirely new range to their fusion selection. And this is called Clover. And look at that. Oh my goodness. It's coming up a little bit redder than it is in real life. It's probably more berry, I'd say, like um, a cherry or a strawberry colour rather than a, a bright red. And the blend in this one is grey Shetland, mulberry silk and a smidge of Shetland Moorit. And I'm really surprised because I thought when I read the descriptions, I thought, oh, well, if with the Shetland, etc., this might be a little bit more... Um, 
uh, rustic or have a little bit more bite to it, but it is so soft. It is so beautiful. And if you would like to kind of try the Gotlands and the Shetlands and those sort of um, fibres, move away from the merino, merinos a little bit, then this is the perfect one because it is super soft. And actually, it sort of feels lighter than this one. Um, maybe there's more air in the fibres, maybe they're longer staple lengths, etc. So there's more air in this one. Gay will probably be able to tell you much more about it than I can, but that's how it feels in the in the plait anyway. Um, so yeah, so that's the colour that I chose, which is clover, and then the other ranges in there are genetian. Is it genetian? Which is just beautiful. The teals and the kind of the greeny yellows in there. That was a, a strong contender. I think that was the one that I'd said first. Um, and then this moorland gorse, and I love this. So as a as a a Midwalian girl, this gorse colour, the yellow gorse bushes, the yellow and the green of the gorse gorse bushes is absolutely spot on. It's absolutely beautiful. And then finally, heather, which is the the purpley grey blues, and that is gorgeous. It's almost like greens in there as well. So a really, really beautiful range. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have fun spinning those up and seeing what they look like and how they feel once they are uh, twisted and into yarn. So yes, thank you so much, Gay, for sending those along. I will absolutely update you on how they work out. So some spinning fun to be had there. So I will keep you posted. But yes, if you are looking for some beautiful fibre blends and you want to, to experiment a little bit more, then certainly check out the Fibre Hut. And I'll put the links, etc., below, as I generally do anyway. Um, yeah, so that's probably all the kind of spinning, e-knitting, e-content for now. Uh, so if you are leaving us here, then thank you so much for coming along. I hope you are keeping well with your projects and you're keeping busy. Uh, but if you are staying, what have I been up to? So, yes, I think last time I spoke to you, we were just about to go into production week for uh, our third year show in university. Um, and yes, that went really well. It was fantastic. We had viewers from all over the globe, which was just brilliant for the students and and actually I know we had to do a digital production which um, is not ideal for a, a practical course but I think they realized the benefits in the end because so many other members of their family and, and friends etc could see the show that they wouldn't have been able to ordinarily and we might have been able to put the show on on campus but whether we'd been able would have been able to have a, an audience in person would be not sure whether we'd have been able to do that even if we had have been back on campus so that's a shame to kind of rehearse a play and do a play for your module but then not get an audience to see it at the end would have been really disappointing so as it was we had a really positive experience in a really disappointing situation in terms of the covid um restrictions etc so yeah it was great so we had like over 500 views and so many different more, uh, members of, of the students' family were able to see the show that wouldn't have been able to travel down to, to campus. So yes, it was great. It was a really positive experience. But um, yes, at the end of last week, I did feel like I was on my nose. So uh, yes, glad, glad to get that done and dusted. Um, so still working from home. We are still in lockdown here in Wales. Maybe uh, next Friday, I believe, there might be some movement on um, on the possibilities of being not in such a tight lockdown and, and maybe being able to, to travel locally. I think that's going to be the next phase and hopefully that phase happens on Friday, but we'll see what the numbers say, see what happens. Um, in terms of the kitchen, we are so close. We are so close. If you've been here for a while, you're like me thinking, just why is it taking so long? I don't know. I don't know why. But we're nearly there. Hopefully, we'll have the dishwasher and the washing machine and a sink. <gasps> washing dishes in a sink or in a dishwasher rather than the bath. That's exciting. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we'll have that side of the kitchen done by Friday. Um, it would be great if the other side with the cooker was done as well by Friday, but I I dare not hope 
because I think that will just lead me to disappointment and rack and ruin. So the lights still to be, need to be done, all that stuff needs to be done, but if we could just be able to use, see it's so busy here, um, but if we could just be able to, to cook and to wash dishes, then I would be a happy, happy lady. Um, yeah, what else? That literally is it really. So we've got the day um, stripping back some paint work, etc. That's what we've been doing really for the last six or seven weekends is stripping paint, uh, putting Danish oil on woodwork, those kind of bits and bobs, because you can't really do it in the week because there's so much dust and busyness here that we have to kind of wait for the builders to go to do those little bits and bobs around the edges. So that's probably the plan for the rest of the day. Um, quiet a day tomorrow hopefully hopefully get some spinning done i got so much spinning to do spin for this shawl spin up this lovely fiber from fiber hut uh is not enough hours in the day and i'm sure you would all agree with me on that one so yes uh talking of not enough hours in the day i have used up far too many of yours although i would say the yarn vending machine had lots of positive response last week so i think um yeah, I think we need to start a crowdfunder and get a yarn vending machine in every community. I think it's very important for, for all sorts of reasons. Um, okay, I will leave it there. So um, yes, keep well, keep busy, and I will catch up with you in a couple of weeks. Take care. Hoi bye.